Hi, Mystery Baker here. Hope you're all doing well. If you'd like to know how I made this coffee and walnut cake, then please stick around. I'll be doing a few tu full tutorial on how this was created, including the luscious buttercream filling, which is coffee based. So let's get started. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Um, the coffee and walnut cake is probably one of my favourite cakes of all time. It's a classic, British classic. And um, it's great with uh, having friends around and family, getting a cup of tea, <laughs> making a tra traditional cup of tea, English tea, and uh, serving it with that. It's just beautiful. So, before we even begin the cake, there's one thing you must do in advance. So I'll just push everything aside. You can buy coffee essence and that's fine. I find it a little bit too sweet and not enough coffee if you understand. So I make my own and it's the best way. And all you do is you place your favorite coffee, a large heat tablespoon into a pot or a cup even and pour a little bit of boiling hot water in. Just like you were making yourself a cuppa but you don't need a lot of water and then stir well until all of the coffee granules or powder has dissolved and that is the best coffee essence you can get I promise you that so in here I have eight ounces of caster sugar eight ounces of butter you can use margarines that's absolutely fine along with eight ounces of self-raising flour four eggs and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract so I'm using the creaming method so I need to cream the butter and the sugar before I add anything else so rather than bore you I'll do this off camera and I'll be back in a bit okay <clears throat> so I've creamed my butter and my sugar there and that is the creaming method done. You're looking for the butter and the sugar to turn uh, ivory white and it's not as granular. You, you need to get a lot of that sugar dissolved in, and that's what makes it the paler colour that we're looking for. So in this moment your coffee essence now should be at room temperature. Just to let you know you do not add any coffee essence to your cake if it's still hot or it will melt your cake. So I'm going to start my method, and it's a sure way of creating consistent results, is adding my flour, my self-raising flour and my eggs together in three parts. So a third of the flour, a third of the egg, beat, a third of the flour, a third of the egg and beat and so on. Three times until all of the mixture is gone. And uh, I'm going to do the first third for you. So I'll put a third of my flour it's just guesswork and I'm going to sift that in okay what that's picking up okay and a third of my egg now I've beat them because I like to add extra air the more air you get into your cake the lighter the sponge so I've got my eggs here and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and I'm going to add a third of the egg okay and off camera I'm gonna beat that up and I'll come back to show you what it looks like I'll be right back. okay I've mixed that through somebody asked me once how do you prevent a, a cake like this from curdling well just follow my method because when you add flour and eggs together it doesn't curdle it's only when you add your eggs first that that could happen so using my method, you'll never have curdling. Simple as that. So now I've added my first third. I'm going to add my second third, my self-raising flour, third of my eggs, and beat again. And what I'll do is I'll beat this now, and then I'll add the final third, beat it, and then come back rather than coming back after I've just beaten this. So basically I'll, I'll come back when all of the ingredients, the flour and the eggs have been incorporated. I'll be 
be right back. Okay, I've incorporated all of the flour and all of the eggs. And now we're ready to add our coffee. Now this is the stage where, um, unfortunately for you, whether you like it or not, the trials and tribulations of making cakes. At this stage, I would definitely recommend the taste test. Okay, so you gotta taste it. So I've got my coffee essence and I'm going to do this. I'm gonna add one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and I'm gonna beat that off camera and I'm come back and we're going to taste it to see if it's enough. If it isn't, we add more and so on. I'll be right back. Okay, taste test. Sorry. No, it needs more. So I'm gonna put another two tablespoons. One, two. And I'll beat that off camera and taste it. Now this is all individual liking you might not like it that strong i'm doing it relatively strong but still keeping the sweetness of the cake that's really important and integral so i'm going to beat this off camera and i'll be right back okay i've beat that through and it's ready now so i've greased i've put some greaseproof paper in two tins and what we're going to assemble so as i say Use your own integrity. Um, it might be the right amount of coffee for me, might not be the right amount of coffee for you. It is a, a case of tasting. Okay? You don't want to lose the integrity of obviously the cake flavour, but at the same time, you, you don't you want to taste a little bit of coffee in that. Okay? So I've emptied cake mixture into the tin like so and I'm going to using a spoon push down from the center and out because it does rise in the middle and I want this even because I'm making the two halves as a sandwich sandwiching them together I don't want it too high in the middle so that's the reason for that because you've added, um, just add a little bit more to there. Um, because you've added a lot of liquid, the coffee essence um, liquid to the cake, it may take a little bit longer than normal, but don't worry about that. It won't be 30 minutes longer, but it could be five to 10 minutes longer than it would normally. So I've added that cake mixture to the pans. Again, spreading out to the edges because we want to kind of create a sandwich okay so i'm just where's not what not <laughs> where's not what not get every every little bit that you can in these sandwich tins so sorry yum i've got it on my mm, it does taste good so these will go into a preheated oven now 180C, which is 160 Fahrenheit, um, gas mark, four maybe, yes, four. And I'm going to put these in for 30 minutes, okay? And then I'll test them using the cocktail stick method. Place it in the centre. If it comes out clean, you're ready to rumble. If not, put it in for another two minutes and so on and repeat the process. So this is going to go in the oven. I'm going to tidy up now and I'll show you what they look like when they come out of the oven. I'll be right back. Okay, they're out of the oven. They've been in for 32 minutes, to be exact. Um, I'm going to let them cool now. Once they're cool, I'll wrap them in cling film and I'm going to put them in the fridge. And then when I come back, we're going to make this delicious, delicious coffee buttercream. And we're going to fill this cake. I'll be right back. Okay, I thought I'd just jump right, right in here and just show you a stage that I do. This is optional. It's not for everybody, but it's something that I do, especially when I'm making a coffee cake. Now, you don't have to add walnuts. This could be nut-free um, because I add my walnuts just as a decoration at the end. So this could just be, in all intense purposes, just a plain and simple coffee cake. But um, I like to add some moisture. Now, usually I would add to a sponge, you know, some um, jam, 
or raspberry sauce etc but it doesn't work with coffee so what i do just to add a little bit more baboom va 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 boom um i put a little bit of coffee essence on my sponge and i brush it over the top just on the base not on both um sandwiches just on one and basically all this is again is three heaped teaspoons of your favorite coffee and four heaped teaspoons of icing sugar and i just dissolve that in some boiling water and it kind of gives this sweet coffee um essence which is great and it just adds a little bit of vavavoom to your sponge so with a brush something like this i'm just going to do this <laughs> and i'm just adding a little bit of my this is not the perfect brush but it's just adding a little bit of coffee essence to your sponge don't overload you don't want it wet you don't want to saturate your sponge but it will give it a little bit of moisture because it's missing it because there's no jam this time and uh, you go around I mean I think this is a very adult cake coffee cake is one of those ones a little bit like uh, you either love it or you hate it I like it <laughs> it's one of my favorites um, I think it's because it's um, grown up and I do love coffee I mean I, I drink too much not too much of it but it's better than drinking too much alcohol I definitely agree with that so I'm just brushing it on in small amounts I know it looks maybe looks a lot but it, it there's not a lot there um, it's just giving it a, a bit of a, a soak it's and that sponge will absorb that moisture okay I'm just going around one more time It's a very, very grown-up cake. Definitely. Definitely. And the icing sugar just takes that edge off and makes it like a nice sweet liqueur. I mean, they do this, I think, very similar with the tiramisu, where they soak the sponge in the coffee essence. But um, that's why I, it's my take. You don't have to do this. You can just ladle your buttercream on and away you go. So I'm going to leave that for a couple of minutes just to absorb and then I'm going to show you how to make this luscious coffee buttercream. I'll be right back. Okay, buttercream time. So what I've done here, I've done it in advance. I've put 140 grams of unsalted butter and 260 to 280 grams of icing sugar. And I've beat that through and added a, a teaspoon, sorry, half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And with the essence I made earlier, and this is the one with the sugar applied, I've obviously got plenty left. I'm going to add this to my buttercream in stages. Okay, so again, less is more. <laughs> I'm going to add two tablespoons and fold that in. Okay. You can always add more, all right? You can always add more, okay? And I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna to have to do the taste test because I don't like giving you exact things that I know for certain should not be exact. Mm, that's really good, but it needs more. So, okay. Two more. Two more. And once you've done it, I think that's it. Once you've folded this through, because it's quite liquid, and that's not a bad thing, but because it's quite, quite liquid now, um, I would add that back to the fridge just to fill up for, I would say, no more than five minutes before applying it to your cake. So, off camera, I'm going to put this in the fridge, and then when we come back, I'm going to show you how to as assemble the coffee and walnut cake. I'll be right back. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've took the buttercream out of the fridge, 
and it's still quite soft but you know it's no big deal because I often with this cake I return it once I've put it all together I return this cake back to the fridge okay um, and take it out about 15 minutes before I'm ready to serve so I've got my buttercream here and I'm going to start I'm going to start okay move my buttercream out of the way I don't want too much going on I'm accessing it from the side I hope you can see but I'm about to spread this on again I've always said this don't um, overstretch okay if it starts to pull add more okay and I'm just turning that round if it starts to pull add more because you'll take the top off the cake crumbs and you don't want that I'm just going to add a little touch more not too much but as I say this is a really indulgent grown-up adult cake for us coffee lovers <laughs> us coffee lovers okay and I've made it relatively even I haven't been shy with it it is a really nice buttercream coffee buttercream is really nice especially if you follow my recipe but I'm making it as even as I can um, and then I get my other half my other half of the sponge that I made earlier the other half and I place it on like so <laughs> mm -mm -mm. oh that is so good and then I make the topping you can do this any which way you want you can pipe this on um, but I'm doing rustic here this is for my beginners nothing fancy and sometimes I think when they do look a little bit more rustic they don't have to look tempting to eat don't you think and that's that and then again sorry the same process and I hope it's in focus uh, hold on <laughs> yeah yeah okay and then we're doing the same thing making it into a circle as much as I can and then just very gently you can turn as you go I mean you can put this on a turntable um, I haven't silly me <laughs> silly silly me and I'm just pushing it to the edges and there's enough buttercream there to um, go all over as I said I've done the recipe of the buttercream it's perfect for this size now this cake here is seven and a half inches okay seven and a half and I'm just smoothing it round it doesn't have to be perfect okay it just has to cover all the way around like so okay I'm quite I'm quite happy I'm quite happy with that oh dear I ran out of storage space so you didn't see me finish off putting the buttercream on but to be honest it was almost there all I've done here you don't have to add any walnuts this could just be a simple coffee cake but I've added some walnuts and I've put one in the middle and just so everyone gets that I like the contrast between the kit the soft cake sponge and the crunchy nut but take it or leave it you don't have to add the walnuts at all I hope you've liked this tutorial um, I'm going to place this back into the fridge now just for an hour or so um, and when it's due to be eaten I will take it out 15 to 20 minutes before it's due to be cut and we will all share a slice it'll be gone very quickly in this house I can assure you but as you can see you know everyone and anyone can achieve this home baking style it's you know okay it's not arty it's not you know aesthetically um, on point but don't you think it just looks simple 
and effective and very appetizing and you know and if it's made homemade it's made with love so you can't beat that can you <laughs> well thanks for your time hit like subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell and you'll be notified of any other tutorials that i upload um thanks for your time and if you have any comments please comment below and listed below will be the full recipe thanks for your time bye